This video is a brief tutorial for the Mythic v2 shortcut file, which is included in the shortcut file library of the inline scripts plugin. The Mythic v2 shortcut file provides shortcuts that let you use the Mythic Variations 2 system, written by Tana Pigeon and published by Wordmill Games. It's a deep system for playing many tabletop RPGs in a solo or GMless fashion. Mythic V2 has a lot of shortcuts, but there's only a couple that you really need to actually use it. I'm going to go from top to bottom reviewing the shortcuts that you need, and then later on I'll touch on the other shortcuts. So we start with the Mythic V2 reset, which resets the Mythic V2 state, including the chaos value and the scene counter. Then we move down to fate. There are two fate shortcuts. They do the same thing, but take different values for the odds. The first one takes a number from negative 4 to 4. The other one takes a text, like 50-50, impossible, or sure thing. Then you have detail and event, which lets you roll detail and event checks. Then you have the scene shortcut, which allows you to advance to the next scene. And finally, for the NPC behavior subsystem, we have descriptors, disposition, and actions. So I'm going to go over some examples to demonstrate these important shortcuts, and then I'll quickly run through the less important ones. Let's start with Mythic V2 Reset. The Mythic V2 Reset shortcut resets the state of the Mythic V2 system, including the chaos value and the scene counter. Then it displays a scene heading for scene 1. The next shortcut I'll show is the fate shortcut. You start with a question, and then run fate. As I said before, fate has two different versions of the shortcut, one that takes odds as a number and one that takes odds as a string. I'll show both, though I prefer the number myself. Let's start with zero. Zero represents 50-50. As you can see, the output shows a fate check, 50-50, and the answer is no, we're not alone. This time I'm going to show you what happens when you run fate without an odds parameter. In this case, it defaults to 50-50. So the result is fate check 50-50 since we didn't put in odds ourselves. And the answer is yes, the person with you is friendly. We have a random event and I'm going to hold off on discussing random events for just a little while. Okay, one more question. This time I'm going to enter the odds as the text likely, as an example of the second fate shortcut type. The result is fate check, likely, which is what we entered, and then yes, the person you are with is a client. Let's move on to the scene shortcut. This is going to advance to the next scene. It takes a parameter of negative 1 or 1, depending on if the chaos value is lowering or raising. Let's lower the chaos value, so negative 1. All of this is the output from the scene shortcut. It starts with a statement of what happens to the chaos. In this case, it's lowered to 3. And then it increments the state counter and displays a state heading, along with space to type the scene setup. OK, let's run through a couple checks. Detail check first, and PC positive. Detail checks sometimes require meaning, but since that's optional, we make it a separate role. And you have action and description meanings. We'll go over each one. Fairly straightforward. Then you have the event check. This can be called manually, as in this case, or it can be run automatically as a random event when you run a fate check or when you advance the scene. And the last group of shortcuts comprise the NPC behaviors subsystem of Mythic Variations 2. Descriptors takes no parameters, and it returns two of the three descriptors. It's missing the identity because typically the identity is circumstantial rather than random. There are two disposition shortcuts. One for a random base roll, one for when you've already determined the base roll for a scene. The first parameter represents how many descriptors add to the disposition minus how many descriptors subtract from it. So if you put in three, that means all the descriptors added to the disposition. The result is aggressive, plus 4, and it also tells you the base value in case you need to recalculate it when the descriptor modifier changes. 
The second shortcut allows you to manually enter the base. So we'll give it a descriptor count of zero, the same number of descriptors add to and subtract from the disposition, and a base of 12. So in the first case, it rolled the base. In the second case, we told it what the base was for the scene. The final shortcut of the NPC behavior subsystem is action. It determines what the NPC does next. It takes the NPC's current disposition modifier into effect. In this case, let's put in four. The result being continue current action plus two disposition. If you review the book, you'll see that this is a fairly complicated result based on multiple tables, so this automation is pretty nice. Okay, those are the shortcuts you'll need to know to use the system. Here are some of the other ones. Mythic details is a flag that you can set. It's turned off by default, but if you turn it on, then every shortcut result will include all the roles that went into determining that result. You can call scene get to know which scene number you're in, and these chaos shortcuts allow you to manipulate the chaos value directly. And that's a rundown of all the shortcuts. There's one final thing about Mythic v2 that's useful to know. The shortcut file relies on two other shortcut files, if they're available, the state and lists shortcut files. The state shortcut file allows you to save and restore your session state between Obsidian runs, so you can continue your Mythic v2 session after you've closed and reopened Obsidian. The list shortcut file allows you to create lists, which Mythic v2 uses quite extensively. Each of these systems has their own tutorial videos. Type help state or help lists to get links to those tutorial videos. For this video tutorial, I've already set up the lists, as you can see. Mythic v2 takes advantage of three lists, NPCs, PCs, and threads. Most of the random events and event checks that run will reference one of these lists. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, here's an event where none of the lists were referenced. And here's an event where one of them was. NPC acts picks a random item from the NPCs list and puts it in here. That's the way they all work. Okay, and here's another event, thread loss, that picks a random thread from the threads list and puts it in here. And that's about it for Mythic V2. I hope this helped. Thanks for watching.